Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 165 of Love at First Sense, with me, Persilace, coming to you today from YouTube. A bit of a surprise episode, because it was only a few hours ago that I got a sample of this. And as is as it's sure to be one of the most anticipated releases of the year, the, the release that lots and lots of people will be um, wanting to try as soon as they can, I did not want to delay at all uh, before bringing it to, to, to your attention and smelling it together with you. So I'm going to go onto the tablet and make sure that everything is coming through loud and clear. Keep the comments and questions coming. Who gets the first comment? Audrey says, hello from the West Midlands. And Joao says, hi, Mr. P. Herb says, oh, hi. Q George is here saying good afternoon. George, um, well, let's, let's just say you... you um, spotted the the clue on instagram correctly as you as you now know nahadi saying hello alex says we only caught you now well i'm happy to be caught uh rich mitch is saying hello and uh, joanna is saying hello from london lots and lots of hellos coming through um if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please consider doing so and please click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos and also please consider uh, supporting my work on coffee you will find details of all of that in the video description below a little while after the end of this live broadcast lots of people tuning in even though i only trailed this a couple of um hours ago so thank you very much for tuning in david saying good morning from san francisco hello waiting for my uber <laughs> <laughs> says, oh, well, well, I hope it turns up soon. Where are you and where are you going? Uh, hi, hello from Apocalyptic Houston, says Eric. Oh, no, don't. Let, let, let's not go there. Okay. Now, I've cheated a little bit because I, um, I, I, had, to, I had to spray this straight away. Was about to leave the factory, says Reno. Oh, sorry. F for a second, I thought, who is this and what does he mean about to leave the factory? Very, very kind of you to, to tune in, uh, Renault. Um, I wonder, actually, whether you've ever worked with Christine Nagel. I don't think I've ever asked you that before. So you can you can tell us now whether what your experience of working with Christine Nagel was, if ever you have actually worked with her. Uh, David says, I've been very curious about this one. Seems like a different aesthetic from Hermes. Um, right, we need... No, Renault has never worked with Christine Nagel. Okay, maybe, maybe... At some point in the future, if she ever stops being in-house perfumer at Hermes. I could find myself going off on several tangents in this video, so I need to focus, uh, but keep the comments coming. We have got a press release, we've got lots and lots of talking and smelling to do. Um, I had to spray this as soon as it arrived, because I couldn't wait. <clears throat> the prospect of any uh, new Hermes is interesting enough. The prospect of a, of a new piece of work from Christine Nagel is interesting enough. Um, I can just see somebody, Tina, saying so far impressed by her Gallo. I love Gallo, as you know. I'm, I'm also really fond of Twilly. This is the this is the Twilly flanker. Um, uh, Twilly au poivre, was it? Yeah, poivre. <clears throat> but what makes this particularly special is that it's the first time in 15 years, which in this day and age in the perfume world is an eternity, is the first time in 15 years that Hermes uh, are releasing a scent that they are overtly marketing as a new masculine. And of course, the last time they had a brand new masculine, it just happened to be Terre d'Hermes, which ended up being one of the most successful masculines of all time. Uh, hugely important uh, release for the brand, very important release for Jean-Claude Elena, who composed it, um, really, really successful with women as well, very, very influential piece of work. So, you know, you feel like kind of saying, no pressure, Christine Nagel, the brand has waited a long time to do another all out, out and out masculine, and so people are going to be expecting great things. Hermès are quite interesting as a brand in that most of their output actually is not overtly gendered for a mainstream brand. Um, the Hermès are all overtly sold as unisex. The Gardens, the Jardin series, are all overtly sold as unisex. Uh, Twilly, in fact, uh, was you're all going on about metallic notes here. Don't worry too much, okay? I'm telling you now, don't freak out too much about the fact that apparently this has a touted metallic note. Twilly um, was the first sort of overt feminine that they had done for a while. I think the last one before that was Jour uh, d'Hermes. Um, so, 
a lot riding on this one um, and a lot riding on the fact that it, it, it's a follow-up to, to Terre. So I have sprayed it, I've been wearing it for the last few hours, and I have to say that if initial impressions are anything to go by, it, thank goodness, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's, I, I don't want to kind of hype it up too much and sort of start piling on the superlative straight away in case some of you smell it and think, oh, you know, he, he overhyped it, but I'm liking it. Um, by the way, also, thank you to Hermès, not just for the sample, but for, for this amazing display, which is meant to, and does, echo uh, and reflect what you get um, in, in the scent. So if you're thinking, if you're thinking very green, and if you're thinking scented narcissus, um, then you're absolutely on the right track. So let's spray it, and we've got a press release, and we can talk about it, and you can tell me what you think of Terre, and you can tell me what you think of the brand, and what you think of Christine uh, Nagel's work uh, overall. We haven't even said what it's called, have we? It's called H24, and I suppose that's what that's what we will call it if we're English speakers. Although in France, this is this is where my accent is going to muck things up terribly. In France, it's going to be H H24, uh, and unless I'm mistaken, that's a reference to um, an an Hermès address, uh, but it may be a reference to something else as well. So, what? hit me straight away, and which made me think, oh, thank goodness, this is probably going to be all right, and I want to do a video on it straight away. What you get immediately is you get an absence of ambery woods. So let us all, collectively, around the world as we're watching it, just give a massive cheer in the direction of Paris and Hermès HQ and say thank you, thank you, thank you, Hermès and Christine Agel for not overloading this with ambery woods and not making it a yet another crass stereotypical I can see I can see the responses here. Tina going, yes, Eve Spider smells hallelujah, Florida Sam saying hallelujah, and Arthur Van Dyne saying hurrah. No ambery woods. That's exactly how I felt, because because you know she did do Eau de Citron Noir as well, didn't she? Which is massively loaded with ambery woods. And then with this one, I kind of thought, oh, where's it going to go? Where's it going to go? Because it is a masculine. And this is what the, this is what the powers that be tell us that, um, you know, men supposedly want to want to smell of nowadays. But nothing like that in the opening blast. If there is something like it towards the end, it's very much blended in with other elements. Uh, and, and it plays very much a supporting role, so you will not get those <laughs> rip the inside of your nose out ambery woods in this. Was worried it would be Bleu d'Hermès, says John. No, it is so not like that at all. It is not Bleu de Chanel, it's not Dior Sauvage, absolutely not in that realm at all. So, phew, collective sigh of relief and a great big thank you <laughs> to, to the creative forces at Hermès. Um, what you do get is is gentleness, softness. Terre uh, Terre is all is, is by no means an aggressive scent, but but it is it is flinty, um, with its with its cool spices, with its cardamom, with its ginger, with its vetiver, obviously, with its wood notes. It comes across as maybe more predictably masculine, which which kind of sounds like I'm putting it down. But you, and I'm I'm not trying to. I I love Terre, but this, this is the this is the the sort of softness of masculinity. This is the tenderness of masculinity. Does it lean towards Voyage d'Hermès? Says David. No, 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 not at all. I mean, for me, Voyage is, is again spicy, musky, nothing like that at all. This is the smell of what you would imagine this to be. So it's green, but it's gently green. It's softly green. It's a sort of diffused green. It's floral, absolutely. You get the narcissus note, but it's not. It's not the narcissus of something like you know Penhaligon's discontinued Ostara, which was really, really strong and prominent with its with its daffodil narcissus. Um, you get a, a, a suggestion of citruses, but again, they're they're not overly sparkling. They're not overly sharp. You get a woodiness, but it's a soft woodiness. It's a floral uh, woodiness, and I also get quite a marked soapiness, and I wonder if that's to do with one of the ingredients that apparently is key in this, 
but again, the soapiness isn't isn't overdone. And I'm reminded of that kind of brief moment, like Bel Respiro says, Q George. Bel Respiro's green again is is quite a marked, strong green, isn't it? It's quite a lung filling, breathtaking green. Here, everything is soft, soft, gentle, gent. You know, it's doucement, doucement. Um, is it very transparent, as in the Jean Claude Elena era? I suppose it is transparent, but it's not watercolorish. Okay, so it's not. It's it it's it's less abstract than some Jean Claude uh, Jean Claude Elena compositions. It's it's much more figurative. Again, I keep turning to this because I think, yeah, they've really done a good job of of of, of just translating that into the bottle. Um, and well, what I was saying just before I got sidetracked, it reminds me of a brief time in the sort of mid 90s, maybe mid to, to late ish 90s, when masculine sense just became a touch soapier and gentler in maybe in their use of musks, rather than being super scrubbed and super, super clean and and and, and consequently super abrasive. Um, really taken with this. It, it harks back, uh, the, the, there's a gentle and yet marked clary sage note, so a herbal note, which made me think of uh, Chanel's Pour Monsieur. But whereas Pour Monsieur is um, a, a very definitely a citrus chypre, this doesn't overly play on the mossy notes or the mossy ideas. Sounds like lovely gentle green, says Thea. Yeah, lovely is a good word, but it's not insipid. Um, it does have character. You know, it's it's not it's not wan and it's not bland, not astringent, says David. No, it's absolutely not astringent. I mean, I, I think she's done a very good job. And I've been uh, very, very fortunate to be invited to the virtual, the online press launch tomorrow morning. Hopefully I'll be able to make it. I should be able to make it. I'm planning to make it. And hopefully there will be an opportunity to put some questions to Christine Nagel, um, because I very much want to ask her about whether whether this is precisely what she wanted to do. I'm just going to move this because I can see there's a bit of glare coming from that bottle of Gallo. Really taken with it, really taken. And, and it reminds me of some sense from from late 90s period. I'm going to I'm going to name check one as well, but I don't want you to take it the wrong way because I know that it's a perfume that a lot of people really, really didn't like, even though I always had a lot of time for it myself. It reminds me a bit of Dior's Hire, and I forget exactly when Hire came out. I think Hire may have been early this century or perhaps could have been late 90s. But I always quite liked the clean and yet not stupid quality of, of, of Dior's Hire. And it, it seems to have something of that happening in there. Maybe maybe the, just the quietest suggestion of, of Apple... Um, Eve Spider Smell says, Hire brings me back. And Q George, don't take it the wrong way. Does it have a similar character, Calvin Klein? Truth for men. See, no, I won't take it the wrong way because I don't remember. All I remember about Truth now is that I remember I actually enjoyed wearing it and wore it for a while. The sort of soft rain shower basil green scent. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that kind of thing. Um, it It's... It, it's not like anything that a, a mainstream house is releasing aimed at men at the moment. So again, hats off to, to Christine Nagel for that as well. It's not like anything that's coming out at the moment from YSL or Lancome or, you know, heaven forbid, Dolce & Gabbana, um, uh, Versace, etc., etc. And even Garlin, of course, have gone down a completely different line with Lomi Deal. Um so she 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 is she is doing her own thing now. The press release is a tiny little bit on the wordy side, but I I haven't read through it, but I flicked through it, and I thought it would be very interesting to um, share with you. So feel free to if you're watching the recording, feel free to sort of skip forward through some of these bits. There will definitely be a blotter update of this one a few hours after the end of the broadcast. But I thought I'd share some of this with you. I may not um, read it word for word. So the tagline for this scent is nature and technology combine in a fragrance for men. OK, so are you sitting comfortably, boys and girls? Let Percelaise, let Papa Percelaise read you a story from Hermès. 
The men's universe offers infinite variations, a dizzying array of possibilities that Hermès perfumer Christine Nagel has explored with delight and her characteristic genius for swimming against the tide. She says, to create this new Hermès signature fragrance, I had to open up other, less predictable paths to move away from the conventional woodiness of men's scents. Innovating and inventing and not confining men to a single identity, it was by observing the work of Véronique Nishanian, I'm probably mispronouncing that, artistic director of the Hermès men's universe, that this fragrance took shape. Uh, Najal says, when I intended... Sorry, when I attended one of Veronique's runway shows, I'm always struck by how I am able to feel the texture, the very weave of the fabric, with my eyes. Veronique Nishanian and Christine Nagel share a love of fluidity, the right proportions and materials. They perfume her, a virtuoso of volumes, has textured her raw materials to create a disruptive, almost tactile impression. There, there is, there is potentially something fabric-like through the use of the, the um, we may as well say it of this sclarine, in the base. But we'll, we'll get on to that. Uh, so moving on, it all started with an aromatic botanical note. To make it her own, without revisiting well-trodden ground, the creator of H24, an intuitive and tenacious researcher, chose clary sage with its inflections of hay and cut grass alongside the highly distinctive, slightly animal amber base. So again, quoting her, the, this variety is far more enveloping and more sensual than garden sage with its medicinal camphor-infused accents. The clary sage, essence and absolute combined, refuses to blend into the background. It is dominant, expressing itself from start to finish, a botanical backbone that draws the fragrance out into a slender silhouette stretching towards the sky. So we've got the sage. You still with me? Moving on. Since desire is organic, why not convey it as if it were a flower? Not just any flower, but one that is intriguing, inviting, assonant. A flower that is in fact not quite a flower. The Narcissus Absolute, a botanical wildcat that defies its fragility, is one of those untamable scents that need to be handled with care. But it has what it takes to appeal to men. In addition to its renowned green, crisp, edgy side, it exhales a certain memory of nocturnal tobacco. Nagel says, I have softened it without stripping it of its lively electric character by having it co-distilled with another material, which one? The dream keeps this a mystery. So they're not saying which one. Don't even ask me to try guess, OK? Invention is Christine Nagel's playground, and she willingly cultivates her taste for the audacious hybridization of nature and innovation. This impulse has sparked her interest in biotechnologies that enable the production of new molecules based on natural and environmentally friendly enzyme reactions. She says, I like to go towards natural, very classic raw materials and work them using technologies that give them other renderings, other textures. I'm going to skip a few bits. So then they talk about how one, another part piece of the puzzle is uh, rosewood, which I, I think you can very definitely pick out. And the finale, as it says here, is delivered by a molecule of the future, sclarine, initially green and earthy. This aromatic body very quickly develops its sensual tang reminiscent of a hot iron. Um, oh, sorry, just, just seeing a comment. So I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get to the comments in a sec. It offers the composition its metallic vibration, a rich and intense pleasure and links with the Hermes men's ready-to-wear universe, evoking the heady aroma of hot irons on fabric in the workshops. And I think it's only nowadays in workshops that people would even know what hot irons smell of. I still do my ironing. Madame Persolet still does ironing. We are an ironing household, but I think there are not many of them left. And uh, final bit before there's a little bit about the bottle, by the way, in case you're interested. The bottle has been designed by one Philippe Mouquet. But little bit, uh, final bit on the scent, a precise form of magic, the formula is intentionally short and incisive. Meticulously interwoven and with no visible seams, each ingredient has been worked, some in an entirely bespoke way, and exists in its own right. This formal simplicity offers enough space within the composition to allow light to penetrate, creating this unique and paradoxical impression of sensual clarity. An alternative aromatic note a wood without the scent of one, and an impressionistic molecule. 
This fragrance cultivates its unique facets one by one. Enriched by all of its sharp edges, H24 is a vibrant, sensual and luminous fragrance, a reinvented signature with just the right note of casual ease to ignite men's style without ever confining it. Vibrant and luminous I would go for, sensual possibly, in maybe in a kind of, you know, John Keats lying back in the grass, staring up into the skies type of way, not, you know, nocturnal sensual. As it's developing, it's definitely becoming just more gently soapy, but still green, still herbal. I'm really, really taken with it. The The brand have also sent some larger blotters with some of the um, key materials, including this clarion here, which I've never smelt on its own. And it's, yeah, it it's, it's weird. I'm sure it's very, very dilute here. I don't necessarily get steam. I actually get, I get the dampness, I get damp cellars, I get, if you remember the video in which I talked about a uh, bat from Zoologist, it's that kind of damp, dank feel, but it, but it's absolutely not allowed to dominate in the scent, okay, so don't, so don't think that this and that are um, inextricably linked or synonymous. Right, let me just look at some comments because I know lots and lots of you were, uh, uh, have been writing. Uh, Endymion says, Hermes made a lot of fuss uh, for their standards about the ecological rosewood in this. Is it noticeable scent-wise? In a word, yes. I would say yes. Uh, Hi, Perselaise and everyone. Nice surprise. Just noticed you were live, says Angela. Uh, sounds a lot like Bottega Veneta's Parco Palladiano line. Interesting. You may have something there, actually. You may have something there. Hot iron and steam reminds me of the texture of Duchaufour's Sartorial. Thank you, Tina, because I thought of that as well. Whereas that, of course, in Sartorial comes through with the aldehydes at the top. This is much more in the base and it's softer. It definitely, definitely, definitely also reminds me of something from the past and it'll probably hit me in the days to come and I will then mention it on, you know, on the blog and in the video description. But there is something, there is something retro-ish about it. Um, steam, like in Frederick Mal's Outrageous, says Eve Spider, smells... Mm, no, not so much in that one. How does it rank compared with Terre d'Armes? Well, that's going to be the question, isn't it? I am not about to make uh, predictions as to how this is going to do in comparison with Terre. Time will tell. I bet nobody at Hermès even knew that Terre would turn out to be this huge, huge, huge hit and is still so successful. <clears throat> Hermès are obviously thinking that in order to appeal to guys at the moment, they need to be going green. And I don't mean just green just in terms of smell, but also green in terms of packaging, green in terms of sustainability, green in terms of environmental consciousness. The, 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 the box here has got on the back, it says that it's made from uh, untreated paper produced from recycled fibres. It's a recycled glass bottle. It's a refillable bottle. Um, I absolutely think it has every chance of doing extremely well. I think uh, they may succeed in... A lot will come down to advertising and how this is marketed, okay? Unfortunately, so much of the success of a mainstream perfume comes down to how it's marketed, but they may succeed in getting um, the, the, the hard-earned pennies of the guys who actually would like to reject Dior Sauvage and Bleu de Chanel um, for, for whatever reason those sorts of guys may come flocking to this because this this is very much the kind of mainstream anti-sauvage, anti-bleu. And Hermès may have been quite smart in trying to, to, to tap into that untapped in a uh, bit of the market. Uh, somebody saying, I did not like Terre d'Hermès, the vetiver. I found it to be way too old-fashioned, so I hope this one is more modern. Yeah, this is more modern. I wasn't crazy about that vetiver flanker either because I just thought it, it just it just went too vetiver, and I'm not, I'm not sure we needed more vetiver from, from Terre. Uh, is it anything like Chanel Platinum Egoiste, says Sean. Oh, I'd have to revisit that, you know. I'm not sure I even have the, the, the platinum version. I'm, I'm a fan of original Egoiste. Um... The platinum, the platinum is is a fairly straightforward fougere, isn't it? I seem to remember. So no, I, it it doesn't make me think of that. Creating a new future for masculine releases, uh, love it says 
um, David Santiago. The bottle is a bit flower grader, says Angela. I don't get what that... What do you mean? <laughs> There's something I'm not getting. Um, can we see a closer look at the bottle, please? I get Mr. Ben vibes, says Audrey. You'd like to take a closer look at the bottle. I, I kind of like the bottle. It's very simple. There's maybe something a little bit 15 years ago about it, you know, 15, 20. I can imagine Garlin doing a bottle like this if they hadn't gone for, you know, the bottle that they went for for um, L'Instant de Garlin. Um, but it's, I think it's, it, it works. You've, you've got the sort of silverized the top bit there. I love the minimalism of the name. I love how it's just put on there, displayed there in a very unshowy way. And you don't get the brand anywhere at all, except for the top and then underneath, of course, and then etched into this diamond shape here. Um, you've just got the fact that it's an eau de toilette and the volume 100 ml. Um, what was that somebody, Yura says, looks like Superman will talk to his father in it. <laughs> That's why I need to do more of these videos, because you always end up making me laugh. I like the bottle, almost like an opposite of Toy Boy. Well, yes, again, it's the anti, you know, much as I love Moschino Toy Boy. Um, is it age 24 because there's 24 ingredients? No, 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 I think I think it's a reference to the Hermes menswear line, isn't it? And and maybe to, to, to an address that's relevant to them. <laughs> Home pride joke. Um, and, no, I mean the bottle next to it. Oh, sorry, yes, this, yes, totally the Mr. Ben thing. This is the Twilly bottle, you know what this is. You're absolutely right. I know, okay, the flower thing. Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. And nobody else will know what on earth we'll be talking about here. Um, the EDP is probably already in the works, says Florida. If if not the EDP, then I would have thought maybe the Parfum. And that would be interesting in this, actually, because this feels very much like the kind of scent that needs to be an EDT. People are comparing it to Diptyque's L'Ombre dans l'eau, says David. Really? Oh, I'd have to revisit that. Okay, we have spent... Almost half an hour talking about one perfume, which means I have taken up far too much of your time on this one already. But um, have you done a Best of Hermes video? I've certainly done a Best of Hermes blog post, so check that out. Go on to persolays.com and look for Best of Hermes. Um, thank you very much for tuning in at uh, short notice. I am still waiting, waiting, waiting for a sample of the latest Serge Lutins. So keep checking out on social media and on the community tab. Keep looking for uh, some news as to when I may do a video on that because again it may be a case of me getting the sample and if I can a couple of hours after that doing a video. Um, but for today thank you very much for tuning in. Thumbs up from me for this one for the moment. Let us see how it wears. Let us see what we're still thinking of it in, in a couple of days time. But um, I, th I think they're on to a winner with this one. So thank you very much. Be good. Take care. Bye.